Hey, check this out. If you want to learn how to use time and attention to get different results and upgrade your training, check this out because I'm going to teach you exactly how. All right, so listen up. This comes up a lot as far as like how do some people even say it doesn't really matter that much time under tension, which just means how long basically you're using to control a rep. Right. And some folks will say, ah, that doesn't really matter that much. But the truth is, is that like the way that we use time and attention can really affect training. Right. It becomes a variable that can really shift training up and get us, again, better results if we use it in a smart way. So I'm, what I'm going to do is break it down a little bit. I'm not going to go too deep into the science of it, but I will explain it so it makes sense. And then kind of just, you know, the three number system. Some people use four number systems. I think it gets complicated in our programs. We use a three number system, make it really, really simple. But there, this, you know, this is the thing I really kind of want to dive into is the primary tempos. Like what type of tempos will I use to elicit a different effect? And like, what is the training goal if we're using those different tempos? Okay, so if you've seen, uh, like this is the V. So Cal Dietz in triphasic training, you know, talks about this. The athletes have a kind of a more vertical V that can absorb force and produce force fastest or better athletes. But really what it comes down to is that like, when you look at this V, Imagine that like if you have this wider V, it means longer time under tension, right? Like I might be going like a two. So, so this might be like a two seconds down, two seconds up, right? So what happens if I have kind of like this longer V force production? Well, a couple of things. I have a longer time under tension. It's a slower eccentric lowering force. So if I'm doing like, for instance, a dumbbell bench press, right? It has a longer amortization phase. Okay. So at that bottom, Right. Where if I'm doing explosive dynamic, I'm going to have a lower amortization phase. This is going to have a longer amortization phase, smaller stretch shortening cycle contribution. Right. So think of stretch shortening cycle. If I'm, you know, dropping down into a squat, punching out. Right. There's a lot of stretch shortening cycle. Right. What that we're using. Well, if we slow things down, there's less of that stretch shortening cycle being contributed. And basically it's tempo based lifting. And we'll explain kind of where, where that comes into play, where if I have a narrow, you know, shorter V, I have fast eccentric lowering. So again, in a squat, I might eccentrically load or even in a bench, right? Fast, fast loading at an eccentric, I'm going to have a shorter amortization phase. And which means I have a larger stretch shortening cycle contribution, right? That elastic energy is going to get stored and I'm going to use it. And again, that's going to be, that's going to come into play depending on what we want as our goal. And then we're going to have a faster concentric and eccentric, right? So just a little geekiness here. Now, the kicker is that like each one of these makes sense depending on what we want to do. Now, the numbers that you've seen, like I like to use the three number system. And really what it comes down to is like your first number is the eccentric lowering phase, right? So think on a dumbbell bench press, I'm going to go, let's say it's a three second eccentric. It's going to be three, two, one. The second number is pause at midpoint. So if I had a one here, I'd come back down and I have a one second pause. And then your third number is the concentric, right? The overcoming phase. So that might be one or X, like as explosive as possible, right? So that's, that's our numbers. Now, one thing to consider, the reason why I said it this way, what about a chin up, right? Because the chin up, you start in the concentric phase, right? That's why I said lowering phase. So on a chin up, if I said three, right? It would be, this is the three, two, one. And then the pause, pause at midpoint would actually be at the top and concentric, right? Wouldn't be coming down. Same thing with the row, right? So just think of it that way, right? What is the concentric, right? The concentric on a row is here. The lowering phase is here, right? And this would be your midpoint of the rep. So there's a couple exercises you want to think about that. But if I wrote that in a program and I said, hey, you have eight reps and you have two, zero, two, right? That would mean two seconds lowering, no pause, two second concentric, right? And we'd keep going. So that's where, the, again, to, to simplify it, when we write stuff in programs, like this is what we do. Um, and there, if I don't write anything into programs, we just have a general lifting tempo, which is a two zero one. I'll get to that, right? I'll get to that. So this leads us to what really matters as far as your training goes, which is the primary tempos. Okay. So. Let's look at all the different, are there more than this? Sure. This is pretty much the majority of what we'll use when it comes to developing programs. Again, whether it's fat loss, muscle building, you know, athletic, becoming more athletic, cleaning up lifts. Okay. And, and I'll show you kind of each one that we use for specific things. I'll even show you some of the stuff uh, using the bench. 
So if we have like a 202 or 303 tempo, that's, you know, and, and here is like how much time per tension per rep. That'll be about four to six seconds per rep. That might be tempo or oxidative work. And I've actually shared this with in the conditioning videos of what Joel uses a lot. And I'll use a kettlebell to show, show you this, right? If we're using oxidative work, muscular endurance, for example, I'm going to do a 303 three, three on this one and demo this, right? So watch. So three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one, right? You kind of get the, you kind of get the gist. There's no pauses, right? It's oxidative work for the muscles. Comes into play in a lot of different things. Again, whether, whether it's like a time on a tempo, we'll do burners at the end for, I would say, sometimes clients that want to have a uh, body composition goals. This is also great for muscular endurance for certain sports, right? So it comes into play in a lot of different kind of areas, okay? Now, eccentric, like, low, like actually slower eccentric, so it might be three, four, or five seconds. We usually want to do crazy long. There's a lot of kind of data that shows after you go five to six seconds, it's kind of law of diminishing returns, right? If you do a 10 second eccentric, it's not necessarily gonna be better than loading it more and doing a five second eccentric, right? The time and attention per rep is gonna be about four to six seconds. Eccentric emphasis, less stretch shortening cycle contribution. Now again, this is the stuff that creates muscle damage, builds muscle, um, does get you sore. But I'll do an example on a dumbbell bench on this one. Right, which we will, especially again, if people have been lifting for a while and you know they hit a plateau and we wanted to shift it a little bit, we might add some eccentrics. You want to you don't want to go too overboard though. I've seen programs where you know everything has eccentric and that's too much. You know, we might do a couple of exercises in a program for that, but not beyond that. So I'll do a five second eccentric, and again, zero and then one is basically kind of a normal tempo coming up, right? So coming down. <sighs> So let's say we go five, four, three, two, one, no pause. Five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. Right, so you get the gist using eccentrics. And the other reason I like to use them too is not just, yes, it is like muscle building, but it's also cleaning up form, right? We'll get to that in a little bit, but if you slow things down, people have to own the movement. So we'll do that a lot of times to if somebody's squat looks clunky, something looks clunky, because if they go fast, like they lose stability. So we'll, we'll slow it down and we can improve movement. Then we have, this is our general lifting tempo. Basically, that's like I said, if I don't say anything, this is our general tempo. I kind of teach that to clients, right? Where it's like one, two, one, right? So up is faster, down is a little bit more controlled. Boom, right? So it's one, two, punch it, right? With no pause, okay? And that's like a three second rep. And it kind of gives you an idea too. Like if you're gonna do 10 reps on a general tempo, it's gonna take you about 30 seconds, right? 30, 35, max 40 seconds. Then we have a two, one, one. And this is what I call momentum control. And I'll show you like for specific lifts where this comes into play, where momentum gets used a lot. Now, even with the dumbbell bench that I just showed, but for example, like rows and chin-ups is a, a perfect example. I'll just do this one to the side right here. But what you'll see a lot of times, for instance, in rows is people using. So what happens? I'm creating momentum. There's no tension here at the top, right? And then it's just kind of dropping down. So I would here, I would basically go like, for instance, a one pause, right? So like two, one, one. Remember, this is a one second up, pause, one Two, one, one, two, one, one, two, right? So I'm pausing it because now I can get that tension at the top, activate the muscles. Same thing in a bench press. If I'm seeing people really bouncing a lot and kind of like losing stability, like they'll come down and you see their shoulder flares and comes back up. Same thing. We'll do one, two, one, one back up. Same thing with the squat. Same thing with anything, right? And again, if you want to, if you see momentum and the momentum is creating like wacky positions of the body, you're slowing it down, you're creating pauses. Very, very helpful. Again, remember, I've talked about this where movement efficiency is king. Like 
If it doesn't look right, it doesn't fly right. So we want it to look right. And then we can use these time and attention to create, again, a tempo that helps them improve form. Like I said, slower eccentrics, pauses, uh, you know, getting weak links, right? G getting weak links out, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So that's where we want to do momentum control. Then we have, this is, by the way, a question mark. You know, something what could be like one to three, five, and then seven to who knows what. Now, that's stability, right? So everything from stability, control at mid mid midpoint, breaking up, stretch shortening cycle. So these are like, could be long isometrics, right? Control down. So let's say, again, this is part of cleaning up movement. Uh, I was saying uh, overcoming weak links. So let's say we got a three second eccentric. One, two, three. And then we might do five, four, three, two, one. And then again, I might go very slow up on, on this one. Because again, they, if they have to move slow, they will now have to own that movement. And if I find, for example, that movement gets clunky somewhere, I'll have pauses in there, right? So legitimately, not just, we might do a quasi ISO where we're going, all right, one, two, pause. One, two, pause. One, two, and then up slowly. Four, three, two, one. Again, I, that's really been helpful with people that have a tough time with controlling certain movements and slowing it down helps them own it. Isometrics really help them, again, in certain positions where they don't feel the stability and this helps out, right? So stability, control at midpoint, breaking up stretch shortening cycle. Again, we're not using any bounces out of place. The same thing with, you know, if I was doing single leg work, working on stability and whether I have a load or not, you know, it might be where I'm going to go. Okay, three, two, one. And I'm gonna hold five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three. Again, you can notice like I have to really work on stability, foot of the hip, right? Core control. So what you know, would this be like a hey, we're working on really stressing the system, building muscle? No, but we're cleaning up movement, we're creating efficient movement. Okay. From there, isometrics. You know, this is a, this is one that's um I think come up a lot lately again, but like, where do we use them? What do we use them for? And I think there's a lot of different ways that we can use ISOs. Um, one is positional control, which again, kind of connects to what we were already talking about, right? If I, if I want to bang out a weak link, even on a bench press, right? I'm going to come all the way down. I'm going to pause like two inches from, from the chest, right? Two seconds, three seconds, use, you know, get that elastic energy, the essence, S and C cycle out and then coming back up. Or even like, for example, a trap bar deadlift, pretend that this is a much heavier weight and I got a trap bar deadlift, right? But if I have a tough time pulling from the floor, I might go here, tension, lift, one, two, right? I pretend this is a much heavier weight, one, two, right? So I can use those isometrics in between reps as well for positional control. Then if we do overcoming isometrics, think of now we can do max force production. So if I slid, um, actually, you know what? I will slide this out of the way a little bit and share this example, right? So one example of ma max force production might be, which takes about like, so if I have a, if I'm doing an overcoming isometric, and I push for five seconds, right? Like nonstop, I'm trying to create as much force as possible. This is where, you know, I love things like force plates where you can actually see, you know, how much force you're producing. But I'll, I'll use a bench example here, this football bar. Okay, so let's pretend that this is lower, but either way, I'm going to come here and I'm going to push into this immovable object. Like three, two, one. No. Right, so let's say that was five seconds, and if we were able to measure that, I see how much force I produce, right? Again, it takes about five seconds where your force is gonna be going up, 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 and then you're probably gonna have a plateau and start to, uh, having seen diminishing returns on that. Okay. By the way, like I've, I've talked about, I have whole videos about overcoming isometrics and how to use them for strength. 
right? Three to five second reps. So think about this. You might do three reps like this, right? I'd push for five seconds. I'd put it back up, rest for five, six seconds or a little bit more, push for five seconds again. Do that three times and that might be one set, right? This becomes very, very useful. So that would be max force production, right? But then we could also work on rate of force development where I would be doing the same thing, but instead of doing it for five seconds, I might do it for three. Where I'm just working on how fast I can produce the force as, as much as possible. So I'll give an example, right? That one I was pushing, one, five, four, three, two, one. So this one will be a little bit different where I'm gonna go, same thing. Boom, and we're gonna go, all right, ready, set. That's it, right? So three seconds, okay? So I did a three second, produce as much force as possible, like it's the zero to 60, right? It's the car, acceleration. We can develop that, again, through doing an overcoming isometric rate of force development. And then we can do a tendon health, right? We know there's some, uh, some studies that show that longer isometric holds, 30, 40, you know, even to 60 seconds long, can, uh, uh, is analgesic, which means that like, pay, it can dissipate the pain, it can help tendons, meaning like make them feel better. Um, and actually Jake Tura, who was on my podcast, talks a lot about this, like loading the tendon heavy and, and then also holding for long periods of time. So you could be, think about even a leg extension, loading the crap out of a leg extension, like going up with two, coming back down with one, and just holding that for 40 seconds, right? It's challenging, but that's gonna improve tendon health and tendon strength, right? So it does have to be uh, a long load, but we could even do something like Spanish squats. So pretend like I have a band attached around my knees up against the rig. So basically I'm very vertical and I'm just holding that position, right? So again, this can come into play a lot, like in a rehab setting, um, post you see a lot of basketball teams after the game, they will do isometrics, um, some, some form of those. But again, if I put isometric in a program, I would write out what that looks like, overcoming or is it yielding? So these are called yielding isometrics, right? Overcoming isometrics, I showed, is pushing an immovable object. Yielding is like me holding this weight, right? So this would be a yielding where I'm just holding that weight for as long as, again, the time says, and we're just resisting that, right? Um, a lot, there's again, there's a lot of ways to go with this and a lot of cool stuff that you can play with. Last two, dynamic. If I write dynamic, that's just like one or two second reps, being athletic and quality movement, athletic movement, right? So let's say I'm doing a lunge. It would just mean that like, I wanna be athletic with this. One, I wanna be smooth, but I wanna move. Right, so I'm gonna be a smoother, faster movement. Now that's gonna be different than if I write EXP, um, which means explosive, okay? Explosive, now I'm trying to be really, really explosive. We'll do this, uh, for instance, with dead stop lunges. For example, I'm coming down to the ground, right? I'm gonna stomp, huh, be explosive. I'm like, hey, I want you to jump out of it. Uh, if we're doing dynamic effort work in, for instance, a banded, banded squat. So imagine that I'm gonna do a banded box squat. I got a barbell, there's heavy band attached to that box squat. I'm gonna control down. I'm gonna explode, I'm gonna tell somebody, like, I want you to feel like I'm try to jump, right? We're gonna create maximal, again, because remember, we have force is mass times acceleration, right? So we can produce maximum force with an explosive movement. That might be a lighter weight. It might be 70% of your max. It might be 50% of your max. It might be even less. Right, we might be jumping with the barbell, right? So those are the dynamic explosive movements. Same thing, I might do a um, dynamic or explosive step up where now again, I'm here and driving up, right? As explosively as possible, we're not using tempos. And this is gonna play into the program. Again, it might be mixed. Like for example, my athlete for life programming, at the beginning after we do dynamic warmups, we'll have sprints, we'll have jumps, which of course is gonna be explosive we might have like a trap bar deadlift jump. That's gonna be explosive, right? But then after that, maybe it's a heavy pendulum squat and I want that 
down tempo to be controlled. So three seconds, the up tempo might be one. Okay, and then we might want to clean some movements up and do a double, for instance, a, a, a RDL. And that RDL is going to have a four second eccentric, three second pause up fast because not only do I want to build the hamstrings, I want to clean up that movement. Right, so in one in one program, we might have multiples of these, depending on again what our goal or is for that client. But here's what I will say, right? If you have been lifting and you haven't been using any of this in the next program, adding some pauses on a lift that's a weak link, right? So you have a weak link and a bench press, and adding a three second pause, right? For instance, adding some eccentric low well, doing a Bulgarian split squat with three to four second eccentric, which yes. They're not, they're nasty, right? But watch what happens. Like you're going to get gains. You're going to get improvement because you have intent based on, again, what you're trying to achieve with your training goal, with your training program. So let this be a bit of a template for you uh, when it comes to time and attention, how you use it. And let me know as always, you know, what you'd like to see and hear more of from the coach's corner on the education side on how to help you to look, feel, and perform more like an athlete without the nagging aches and pain. See you next time. Peace out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel.